Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a brand new video. Well, you saw the thumbnail, you saw the title, we're going to be looking at a new monitor, right? But not just any monitor. I mean, if you're looking to spend two, three hundred bucks on a monitor so you got something to look at, this video is not for you. We're going to be looking at the BenQ SW271C. Now this is a pro level monitor. It's designed for photographers, uh, but I'm also a digital artist and I used it for that as well. And for me, it's absolutely critical that the quality of my work on my screen is spot on, yeah? So we're gonna look through all the specs and at the end, I'm gonna give you guys my opinion, right? Here we go. Okay, everybody, well, let's get this review on the road. So uh, we're talking about the BenQ SW271C. Now, be careful, there are other models out there, for example, the 271B. So we're talking about the DC, right? Just to keep that in mind. Okay, so we have a whole bunch of specs and I'll go through the ones that I think are most relevant to give you an idea of the performance, right? So first of all, we're talking about a 27 inch monitor. Uh, 27 inch will give you a screen resolution of 3840 by 2160 pixels. Now, although this is a pro level monitor for photographers, um, it's also widely used by uh, people uh, like digital artists like myself. And uh, the cool thing about this monitor is it has a whole bunch of new features specifically for uh, video folks, right? Now, as I'm a YouTuber, I do a lot of video work, and so that's why I really appreciate the fact that the aspect ratio of this monitor is 16 by 9. Now, other uh, photography monitors uh, sometimes are 16 by 10. This one's 16 by 9. It's more in line with the work that I do, so I personally appreciate that, yeah? Now, it's a 10-bit uh, monitor. And I understand uh, from feedback that I get from you guys that a lot of people don't really know what that means, right? So let me give you a quick rundown. So um, a bit um, in a binary system is like zero or one, yeah? Now let's apply that to color. Let's say you have a transition from completely white to completely black in one step, right? So white or black, that would be one bit. For color depth, that's what we're talking about here, you want to have as many different shades as possible between absolute white and absolute black. And the more you have, you know, the more bit range you have. Now, an 8-bit monitor has about 1 million color depth. A 10-bit monitor has 1 billion, 1.07 billion to be exact. And I did a video on this where I explained this in great detail how that works. But trust me, as far as color is concerned, that's what you want to have, yeah? Okay, so the display uh, screen coating is anti-glare, which is always nice. I really hate it when you have a super shiny screen and it kind of gets in the way of seeing details of your work. And um, yeah, so I appreciate that. Uh, okay, so uh, it's an uh, IPS panel type. What does that mean? Well, basically it means that if you are looking at your screen from an angle, let's say from the left or from the right, you can still see what's going on. So it's not gonna black out on you and, and that kind of thing, yeah? All right, um, backlight technology, uh, LED backlight. Um, it, uh, for as far as I am aware, it um, gives you a much brighter color setup. Um, there are two types of monitors. You got uh, pixels that have their own light source, and then you have screens where they got LED light from the back. That's what this one has, yeah? Uh, every single screen that I use has LED backlight, and I'm super happy with that. Okay, um, so the screen resolution. 3840 by 2160. Now, uh, that's a 4K monitor, right? Uh, because it's a 16 by nine uh, aspect ratio, that's why you get the setup. And uh, for me, especially for my photography work, I appreciate that. But more and more, because I'm going towards 4K uh, video work as well, uh, it comes in handy with that too, yeah? 
Right, so uh, I got some specs here on viewing angles and so forth. I will put a link below to the full technical specs because I don't want it to be uh, super, super complicated scientific stuff and so forth. So we're going to go with the stuff that I think is relevant. But if you want to read up on all of that, I'll put a link below. Okay. So we have some information on viewing angles, like I said, uh, IPS panel. Uh, the refresh rate is 60 hertz, which is uh, important, I think. Um, Kelvin range as far as color temperature, 5000 Kelvin, 6500 Kelvin, 9300 Kelvin, but of course you have the option for custom setup, user defined, right? The gamma is uh, between 1.6 and 2.6 sRGB. And when it comes to the range of this monitor, um, and we look at sRGB and Adobe RGB, you would have sRGB for anything that is, let's call it on screen use, sort of stuff for websites and whatnot. And the Adobe uh, color range would be more for uh, print work, right? I'll put a graphic up here so you can see kind of what the range is, but especially in the, uh, let's say bluer tones, you have a lot more range in your Adobe uh, RGB, yeah? Okay, on-screen display language. Whole bunch, uh, Chinese, Arabic, uh, German, English, French, Hungarian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, all that stuff, I'll put it down below as well, yeah? HDR, okay, this is an HDR10 monitor. Now, what does that mean? Well, HDR stands for high dynamic range. Uh, if you're a photographer, you know all about high dynamic range. If you're not a photographer, I'll give you a really quick rundown, yeah? If you are taking a photo of whatever, you will have a super bright spot in your photo and a super dark spot in your photo. Now, high dynamic range is kind of the difference between the brightest bright spot and the darkest dark spot. The more high dynamic range you have in your photo means that you have a lot more going on. It's not as flat as, you know, a photo with a low dynamic range, right? Now, in this specific case, HDR10 is for video work, and that's new. And because I do video work as well, uh, you get to create super high quality and work with super high quality video work on this monitor, okay? Um, you have the puck, right? The puck that comes with the uh, monitor. Uh, they call it the puck because it looks like a puck, but it's basically a quick switch uh, device that allows you to jump uh, between different settings. And it even has a black and white setting which is kind of cool if you're into black and white photography or you're you know, working on black and white footage. Let's see what else. Um, okay, so um, power consumption, I'll put a label up here. Uh, power delivery, USB-C and Thunderbolt 3, which is kind of cool, I think. Uh, dimensions, okay, well, first of all, and I got a couple of photos of this. You can tilt the monitor up and down, right? You can swivel it left and right, and you can pivot it. The swivel is 45 degrees. The pivot is even 90 degrees. Um, you have the height adjustment stand, so you can put it way up high or pretty low, depending on your needs. The uh, weight, uh, including the shading hood, is 12 kilograms, so that's quite a bit. It's not some flimsy, cheesy, uh, lightweight thing. It's It has really a lot of body to it. Yeah. Okay. What else? Uh, the exact dimensions. Um, all right. So uh, I'm just checking here what we're talking about uh, millimeters and inches. Okay. So in millimeters, uh, the highest point would be 618 millimeters, 618.7 times 647 times 285.3. And the lowest, in the lowest position, would be 503 and then 647 and 285 would be the same. In inches, 24.8 uh, on the highest point and 19.8 on the lowest point if you put it all the way down, yeah? Okay, now what's really cool is the fact that you can, uh, like I said, uh, rotate and tilt uh, the screen and so forth. And you can also use it vertically if you like to do so. Uh, I see uh, people in certain industries doing this. Um, 
Yeah, I think if that works for you, fine. I personally don't. But what's cool is that the monitor comes with a pretty advanced shading hood that you can customize to fit on your monitor if you are using it vertically, yeah? I use it horizontally. It has all the parts you need to do that. And what's kind of cool is in the top there, there's a little hatch or latch or opening that you can slide open if you're using an external calibration device, something like a, uh, what's that called, a spider? And uh, I have one of those, so, you know, that works quite fine. Okay, what kind of uh, connectivity do we have? We have two HDMI ports, uh, 2.0. We have one display port. We have uh, one USB-C, which is the power delivery, 60 watts, uh, you know, to get things up and running. You have an uh, USB uh, type B for upstream and USB 3.1, two of them for downstream. It comes with a card reader, SD, SDHC, SDXC, and MMC. And when it comes to certification, uh, which is kind of cool, is it comes with a uh, calibration report that is individual and specific for the monitor that you receive. And uh, here's a picture of it. And uh, certification-wise, it's uh, Kalman certified and it's Pantone validated, right? Good to know. All right, uh, what else? Uh, video format support, yes, uh, Gamut Duo. Now, Gamut Duo is kind of interesting. Um, what that basically is, is you can compare sRGB for website use uh, compared to the same image for Adobe SG, uh, RGB. So let's say you have an image you want to use on your website and you also want to print it out. You can have the sRGB for the website next to the Adobe RGB for your print and you can compare them, okay? Okay, and then one thing that I think is certainly worth mentioning is AQ color. Now, I don't know if it's pronounced that way. I heard somebody say Aqualor or something, but AQ color anyway. Uh, it is uh, BenQ software and it's proprietary and what it does is it keeps colors accurate, you know, so that the screen looks like your print, right? Kind of important. I mean, for me, I do client work where there are a lot of logos involved and whatnot. And if you have it look one way on your screen and another way on a print, that's a big no-no, right? So looking at the pricing level of this monitor, it's close to about, I would say $1,600, uh, you know, at this point in time. I think for what you're getting for it, it's a fair price point. I mean, um, it's not your, like I said in the beginning, not your typical $300 monitor. So you have something to look at. It has a lot of features that will help me to do my job. Uh, for me, it's my livelihood. It has to be good. It has to be consistent. And uh, it is. Um, no surprise there. I've been using BenQ monitors for many, many years. I did uh, quite a few reviews on them. And this is one that fits in that series for sure. So for me, the monitor, and I've been using it now for a couple of days. So far, I would say two thumbs up. Um, is BenQ paying me to say that? No, they are not. Um, it is my personal honest review. I stand by it. If I didn't, I wouldn't be making videos on it, okay? So yeah, uh, a positive review uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, if you have any questions about the monitor, uh, feel free to send me an email and I'll be happy to answer them if I can, okay? Thank you guys so much for checking out the video. I uh, hope you get to enjoy your new BenQ monitor if you decide to get one. That said, if you enjoyed the video, hit that sub button. Thanks for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.